Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend. And in this video, we're going to be replacing this existing Square D Pump Troll 4060 well pressure switch with a brand new one. And at the same time, we're going to be replacing uh, the pressure gauge as well with this hardier liquid filled gauge. So let's zoom in and get started. If you break it, he will fix it. If you buy it, he will build it. House on the Mend. All right, so for the past several days, we've been waking up to no water pressure inside the house. And the issue is with the pressure switch of this well not kicking on when the irrigation turns on in the morning. Now, the first thing you need to do on a project like this is to turn off the breaker switch that supplies power to the well. Uh, the next thing I did was pause the sprinkler system so it's not trying to go off and with no water pressure. So I've poured some CLR on this uh, hose spigot here, which is how we're going to drain the system in just a minute. And I'm letting that do its magic so we might be able to get this uh, hose on it to actually uh, drain the water away. But it's pretty heavily corroded out here, so we'll see how far we get. Now, uh, in this particular case, what you see right here is one of two tanks. And then we have um, the water heading out this way past this ball valve and out to the, the house. So we need to shut this off so we're not getting any water uh, coming back when we're going to purge the system right now. Next, we want to drain the water that might still be in this existing line and in the tanks. And we do that right here at this um, hose valve. Now it's looking kind of cruddy. Let's see if we can brush some of that off with a wire brush. Uh, those hose threads are not in good shape. All right. There we go. So not much pressure in there because uh, the well went down overnight but I would really like to be able to keep our work area clean of water getting all over everything. But I just don't think I'm gonna be able to get this guy on there. So let's see if we can come up with uh, something else we might be able to put over there, like a piece of uh, rubber pipe or something that can lead the water away. All right, so this is the top of my daughter's batting tee. And we've got it hooked up uh, to the hose here with a spring clamp. And then I'm going to hook it right up here and hold it in place with another spring clamp. And that'll shed some of the water away. I don't think we're going to get a complete seal, but at least it won't be flooded here while we're working. There we go. All right. We are doing everything we can to stay in the shade this morning. We have an awning set up and uh, we're trying to beat the heat. It's a little after seven o'clock in the morning here and it's already gonna be a sweltering day. So, now that we've drained the water off, we can start looking into uh, changing out the components here. So for safety's sake, uh, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that there is no residual electricity from the capacitors inside of the, um, the well control. So I'm just gonna come right in here and against this plastic piece, I'm gonna close the connection and just make sure that capacitor is all drained out. That way I don't run the risk of getting shocked or doing anything that's gonna damage uh, our well control system. So that's good. Next thing we wanna do is disconnect these two um, wire terminals here. And while I'm doing that, take a look at these uh, terminals right here. Nasty. It's probably not going to matter which is which. They would have been marked differently if it was. These are just completing a circuit. Sometimes it's a much more complex setup. In this case, we're just completing a circuit and we've got a well control box over here that's doing the rest. But just in case, I'm going to go ahead and mark this guy right here as the one that was on the left. OK, 
Okay, we remove those out of the way. And the next thing we want to do is remove this lead so that um, this conduit here, so it's out of our way as well. And we do that by getting in on this little threaded nut right here, and that's just hand tight, which is all it needs to be. Okay. You see how these little leads are tapping and touching each other and they're gonna to touch this little thing? That's why it's so important to make sure the capacitors in there that are about the size of your fist are completely discharged. Okay, so over the winter, I put all this uh, foam insulation down here to try to keep the stem and everything else from freezing. So I'm just gonna remove that because we can use that over again. It's a nice little 90 degree corner piece that I put in there. Right underneath this box, there is a stem and then there's also a nut. So we, that's where we disconnect this pressure switch from. So we're gonna um, protect that stem with a pair of channel lock pliers. At the same time, we unscrew this top piece. So I'm gonna set my wrench here right to that right size. Put in these channel locks and let's see if we can get this off if I crank on There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. All right, no water's coming out. In fact, all I hear is uh, air being sucked back in. But if you look here, you can see a bunch of uh, corrosion inside this pipe. So. When I disconnect it from right here, I'm gonna make sure all that's cleaned out. And then I also need to try to pick all that out. That might be giving us some bad readings. Next thing we'll do is let's take off this pressure switch right here. That'll give us an area to get in there and clean out all that gook. There we go. Look how old this pressure switch is. Uh, it, we've completely drained the system and it's still registering at 65 pounds of PSI. So that's when you know these are broken. And that's the nice thing about this pressure switch here. Uh, number one, it's rated for higher pressure settings. Uh, this one only goes up to 100. But number two, do you see this little, this little bubble in here? This is liquid filled and it's filled full of like a glycerin base, uh, very similar to say ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. And that is gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna help uh, keep this guy from freezing or overheating. This one's rated for minus four degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, we don't reach either of those here in Las Vegas. We do get a below freezing and we of course get into the 115 range, but this guy should be able to handle it. But also this liquid inside, uh, when there's vibration going on, it dampens that vibration so it won't uh, have so much wear and tear on the needle and the gauge inside. So I'll leave a link to this guy. I got it right off of Amazon and I don't think it was more than about five or ten dollars. I'll leave a link to it. Yeah, look at this. See this goo coming out of there? So yeah, there's a lot of debris. What happens is uh, this well water has like rust and other gook in it. And the well sticks get that going in it too. And this stuff, whenever the well uh, has trouble and then kicks back on, it tends to knock a lot of this stuff loose and we get, we get this grimy stuff coming in that we have to filter out. And you can see some of that obviously is clogged in here. So we should get a lot better response from our pressure gauge as well as the, the switch once we get all this stuff cleaned out. All right, so I went through a whole bunch of Q-tips cleaning out uh, this pipe as well as this fitting here and both sides and got down to the point where it was really just uh, some kind of slightly muddy water. So I think we're doing better there. Now I've applied thread tape uh, to both sides of this stem and we're going to put that back in here and then we'll uh, put in our pressure gauge and then finally we'll mount the new pressure switch. So let's uh, get this guy started. Yeah. Yeah, it's 
feeling pretty tight. Okay. Now when you put uh, thread tape on, just always be sure not to come up over the lip and thus impede the water from coming up and uh, giving the pressure reading. Next we have our brand new uh, pressure gauge. We'll start him in there. I'm going to be careful not to put too much pressure on the gauge itself. Once I start feeling a little bit of uh, resistance like that, then I'm going to switch to uh, a wrench and do the rest right here at the nut, which is intended to take the torque, unlike uh, the glass window here. So we're doing pretty good with tension. I'm just going to take it right up to uh, the spot where the window is clearly visible and we're going to stop there for now if it leaks I can always tighten it later when we're leak testing. Now we're ready to uh, put in our new pressure switch and look at the difference between these two. Um, how clean this one is obviously but um, at, from a function standpoint if you look at these contacts, you'll see they are closed because it's reading below the 4060 pressure, right? The 40 cut in. So this guy here, he's also got no pressure, but the contacts are open, which means this is a failed switch and I'm glad we're changing it out. So we have our thread tape here. There's no debris or anything. It's nice and clean down there. Let's start threading this guy into place. And if you see right here, uh, Square D supplied this little cap. Since we're only going to have power coming in one side, we've got this cap here to block off any critters or dust and sand uh, from getting in at least through that port. So that's pretty nice. I'm about to the point where I'm going to switch over and let the wrench right at that nut do the last little bit of tightening. That way we're not putting undue stress up here. That's right where we had it before. Okay, so next thing we want to do is uh, rewire our system. We're going to put these leads through and get this ring started down here. All right, so we've got that set into place and we've got this little ring in here tightened. Now we're going to go right to these two, and if you remember, I put this little mark here, so we're just going to do it exactly the way as it was before. Now once we kick everything back on, these two little guys are going to help us adjust our cut in and our cut out pressure, so the 40-60 pressure to make sure it's just right for our particular needs. But before we do that, we need to come over and check the pressure on the two tanks uh, to make sure the bladders inside are properly pressurized. And Let me show you how to do that next. All right, on the top of most uh, of your pressure tanks, you have a little cap right here that you take off. And uh, inside here, you have what looks to be just like a tire valve or a bicycle tire valve. And that little guy is what's used to introduce pressure into the tank so that uh, the bladder inside helps uh, keep a good amount of pressure in the uh, tank, thus more pressure in the line, and that keeps your pump from having to work as hard. So the pump doesn't have to kick on every single time uh, you turn a faucet on for a small amount of water use. So let's take a standard tire pressure gauge and let's test the pressure in here. All right, we have uh, just a little over 20, so about 24 PSI in this tank. Now normally you want your tank pressurized two pounds below the cut-in pressure. So in our case we have a 4060 switch. Ideally you would want this tank pressurized to 38 pounds, so we are way below that. Let's add some pressure to this guy and get it up to where it ought to be. So this is one of your standard jump start boxes. Uh, it's got a battery inside that can help you jump start your car. The nice thing about this one is it has a little um, tire pump on the back of it. So we've got that hooked up. We've got a pressure gauge right here. We're gonna kick it on and it's really annoying, but it's gonna do the job. All right.
right, so we got the tanks all pressurized where they ought to be. And we're just about ready to uh, purge the system, but I couldn't live with how nasty uh, that hose spigot looks. So went and got a new one to replace it. This one's rated for 200 PSI, so it'll be more than this system, this household system could ever place upon it. So we're just gonna screw that right in here. I put some thread tape on it. So we're gonna get it up here nice and tight. All right, our new spigot's installed and we've got a hose hooked up to it. When we took uh, the pressure switch off as well as this hose spigot, we introduced a lot of air into uh, our system from here where it's shut off back through the tanks and into the well. And we've also uh, loosened up a lot of grime when we uh, were changing the pressure switch. So we want to first purge the system of all the air and any nasty debris that may come out uh, in, in, in the initial flush and take a look at just how much we're getting. So at the end of this hose, I actually attached a uh, shop rag and, with a rubber band and we're just gonna do a little test to see just how much goo is coming out. And then we'll know later on when we run it for a few minutes uh, and put another towel on, if that towel stays clean, then we'll know that we've purged it all out. So uh, it's time to walk back up to the garage and click on the breaker switch so we can get the pump motor running. All right, so you heard the well kick on. You can hear that little bit of rattle with the, the pipes, meaning that the pump's rolling. We're not gaining any pressure yet because we're purging the whole system. And as you can see here in this footage, uh, we've got pretty decent flow for having no built up pressure. And then also look at the difference between the dry area of that white shop rag and the area that the water is coming out of. Look at all that rust and goo that's being flushed out. All right, so I turned off the spigot to this hose and now we're pressuring the whole system because we flushed it well enough. This was the initial flush here. Look at all that, that's nasty. And then after several minutes, I hooked uh, this fresh towel up to it and we only got a little bit coming out of there. Uh, we have a home filtration system that should take care of the rest of that. But that's why you want to initially purge uh, this system before you start introducing it into your irrigation and your house. All right, the well just kicked off and it looks like it was right past 60 pounds. So uh, this gauge is right on with the switch itself. So let's do another test here. I'm gonna go open a hose and let's see when it kicks on. There we go. All right, so just a little bit above 40 is where it kicked on. That's really good. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and we're still holding tight at 60 PSI, which is what this box is preset for, so that's good. I checked underneath here at all the various unions where we have the stem, the switch, where it meets uh, the fitting down here, as well as where this pressure gauge meets the fitting. There's no leaks there, nor back over at the hose spigot we changed out, so that's good. So let me take a moment to talk about these two uh, adjustments right here. Basically, you're cut in and cut out. Uh, they call them the range and differential, but when you read the instructions for uh, the square D, it's basically cut in, cut out. Now, uh, it comes factory set at uh, 4060. That doesn't mean that's all this can handle. It just means that's the factory setting. That can be adjusted you can take a 3 8 inch driver, just like this, set it right down here and adjust both of these if you want a, different in, a difference in the PSI when it cuts out and when it cuts in. So over the next few days, what we'll do is make sure this is the proper setting for us. Our house is quite a ways uh, away from the well here and it's at a slight incline, so by the time the water gets to the house, it's not necessarily the same uh, pressure. And sometimes you may find that you need to increase or decrease this pressure at the house. And how, the way you do that is, is tested over a few days and then you can make these adjustments right here. But until such time, we're ready to just put the little cover on right here 
tighten it down just by hand and that'll keep it from getting blown off. So now you know the steps it takes to replace one of these old ratty pressure switches for a nice clean new one as well as purge the system and test everything. Now let me say this is not a technically difficult replacement. You just have to have basic plumbing and electrical knowledge. Anything beyond what we've done here, you really should call a professional. Obviously, you won't even have a truck with a boom to remove the sticks and get to the well uh, pump itself. But uh, when dealing with the large capacitors of the control boxes or anything like that, I would recommend that uh, you just call a professional. It'll be a lot better in the long run. Now, if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It sure helps out the algorithm with YouTube to start suggesting this to other folks. I'll also leave a link in the description for all the various parts I used in this video. We are quickly running out of shade here, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video by saying thank you very much for watching. Well, 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 well. You're giving me the blues Well, 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 well With you there's always bad news You done me wrong so many times You about to make me lose my mind Well, 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 well You're giving me the blue.